Okay guys, so going to my science video, you've asked me to make a version for maths, so here's what I think you need to do to get a grade 9 or a grade 8 in maths. So, I should remind you that we don't actually have a lot of information on what this looks like because we haven't been provided with it. Um, to help you, to help you try and get these grades 8s, these grades 9s, um, over my website there is a free revision guide playlist with loads of ridiculously hard questions in there for you. The hardest questions I can find on each topic, exam paper walkthroughs, going through everything logically, so go and check those out. But having gone through the specification for the examples and loads and loads of exam papers, a few other things I've noticed is that maths exams are no longer purely about maths. I know this isn't what you want to hear because you've been prizing maths lots and lots and lots. But English reading skills are going to come in there as well. The questions are a lot longer, the questions are a lot wordier. If you're used to just skim reading the questions, picking out the numbers, um, you might be missing important key bits of information which gives the difference between the right and the wrong answer, increase and decrease. Um, so you need to look for that information really, really carefully. There's also a massive crossover with physics now in certain questions and when I'm teaching maths, I'll give them a question that I've, I've given my physics class and in a physics context, there'll be no problem with the question. Give it to you and call it a maths question and you're kind of like, I don't know what to do in this. So there's going to be crossover and you know, calling something a maths question or calling something a physics question, it's been shown, there's lots of studies on this, it actually really changes the way that you approach the question. But it's the same question, so sometimes if you see like, you know, vectors or velocity time graphs and you can't do them in maths but you can do them in physics, well just, just put your physics head on for a little bit of the exam. With the really long wordy questions, take the question and try and turn it into an algebra question. So you could have something really, really long and wordy, but actually it's a simultaneous equations question. Or you could have something really, really long and wordy, and it's actually just find x, okay? So take what you have, all the words, and try and turn it into algebra. Now if you're aiming for these top grades, we cannot afford to lose any marks. Now the questions at the beginning of the paper, especially the non-calculated paper, are going to be quite a lot of recall questions. So what is the value for this? Just learn them, okay? So learn what tan 30 is, learn what your fractions are as decimals. If you can learn them, you're A, not going to skip the question, and it may make some of the questions quicker and easier for you. This is an easy, easy skill to do. And if you are aiming for those top grades, we can't afford to be missing out on any marks, especially not the easy marks. Now, the unfortunate thing about the new um, style of exam papers is that you have to apply a lot of non-math skills to be able to answer some of the harder questions. So you have to be able to apply logic and you need a tiny little bit of luck. So, especially with rearranging some of the harder thirds questions, is they show that this can be rearranged to look like this. And it doesn't give you any clues to the intermediate steps. And if you go off on the wrong track at the beginning, then, well, you've wasted three, four, five minutes of your exam going down the wrong track. Whereas someone else might have gone down a different track and just by pure luck have picked the correct track where you've picked the wrong track. And I know this isn't what you want to hear, but there is an element of luck in these exams. We can try and overcome this luck by doing loads and loads and loads and loads of practice. So I'm making loads of videos for you um, just to try and help you practice, get familiar with the things because you know, I can, look at, I can look at one of those questions and go, okay, I'm fairly sure I need to go down this path to do it, but in the end, after five minutes, I might find I've gone down another path, have to restart the question and go down another path again. If you are in that situation where you've been looking at a question for a few minutes and you just can't work out how to get the right answer, consider just starting all over again. Don't cross out the work that you've done just in case you can't think of anything better to replace it with. The examiner still might be able to give you some works for marking, but it is okay to abandon the path that you've been going down, which is quite a brave thing to do in an exam, and restart um, trying to do it a different way. Because if one way just isn't working, 
then maybe you've just picked the wrong way to do it. And then logic. Now I know a lot of you are sitting there going, I don't have any common sense, miss. And I know, I'm really sorry. It's something that we can't teach you. It's kind of like, you either have or you don't have. And you can practice. There are some like loads of great logic puzzle books out there. You can practice loads and loads and loads. But some of you are going to have more logic than others. It's about, you know, taking your word equation, turning it into um, an algebraic equation, taking um, one situation in the exam and making that logical leap to how to work out the answer. And generally, once you work out how to work out the answer, it's actually not that hard to work out the answer. The hard part is making that first initial leap to what you need to do to work out the answer. And this is a big change from previous exams, because previously, they'd break things down for you. Whereas here, they've taken all of that out, and you go from question to answer with none of the ladder bits in between. Whereas if, you know, in the classes, we gave you the ladder bits in between, you'd be fine. But taking that initial logical leap is sometimes the hardest part of the question. And again, I'm really sorry, the only thing you can do for this is by practicing, 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 practicing loads. Um, I'm doing as many videos as I can, loads and loads of exam papers, because don't forget, in maths, the specification is so, so close between the exam boards. You don't just have to do the exam board that you're studying. You can do the other exam boards, practice papers as well, because algebra is algebra. It doesn't matter whether it's an LXL algebra question or an AQA algebra question or an OTR algebra question. It's still algebra. It still works the same. And then lastly, you need to make sure you've covered everything because we don't know what the easy questions are going to be on or what the hard questions are going to be on. So to help you with this, I've made you a nice little free reading guide you can use as a checklist, whole topic videos, exam paper walkthroughs. Um, make sure you've covered everything and practice, 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 practice. I'm afraid there is nothing else you can do with maths apart from practice. Um, your grade really will be reflective of the amount of hours you've sat down at your desk and practiced, 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 practiced. Now I know this is easier for some of you than others because some of you have lives going on. Um, but I've done a whole playlist on revision techniques that will cover like how to balance your, your social life and your revision. Um, how to revise if home life is too hectic for you to do that. Um, so hopefully that will help you, um, hopefully the exam paper walkthrough is a free revision guide on my website will help you. Loads and loads of flashcard videos, um, and lastly guys, it sounds like a ridiculous, horrible thing for me to say, I will keep all of my fingers crossed for absolutely every single one of you when it comes to the exams because you do need that luck, you do need to be able to make that logical leap if you want to get the top marks, um, and good luck.